Hello and welcome back. Today, I'm replacing the motherboard on my Solval SV06. For some reason, the USB port stopped working on the original one a couple weeks ago, and I contacted Solval's customer support, and after some troubleshooting, they decided it needed to be replaced. So, they had the factory ship me a new replacement, and it just got here. But before I jump into swapping the motherboard out, I've been interested in trying out TH3D's unified firmware for the SV06. I've had their firmware and easy ABL sensor on my Ender 3 for a while now, and I really like it, so I thought I'd give it a try on the Sovel. There's several benefits to using their firmware, but I'm mainly interested in the fast probing, and eventually I want to mess with the input shaping. So the first thing I did was head over to the TH3D website and navigate to the SV06 firmware page. If you're going to follow along, the first thing you're going to want to do is follow their steps on how to set up Visual Studio Code. After that was set up, I downloaded the firmware. If you want a more in-depth guide on how to upgrade your printer's firmware, they've made a very nice guide that's easy to follow on here as well. So I moved the zip file I downloaded to a random folder on my desktop and extracted it here. Then I clicked on the address bar and copied the location so that I could find it easily in the next step. I opened up Visual Studio Code and clicked on Open Folder. When that popped up, I pasted the location from earlier and hit Enter on the keyboard. Then I clicked one time on the firmware folder and then clicked Select Folder at the bottom. Once that opened up in Visual Studio, I waited for the Platform I.O. extension to update and the warning about IntelliSense to disappear from the lower right corner. After those finished, I clicked on Marlin in the left pane and then configuration.h. This is where all the settings for the firmware are simplified. You can skim through it and check out all the settings, but before anything, I uncommented the line that says define Sovel SV06 by deleting the two forward slashes at the start of the line. After that, I pressed Control plus S on my keyboard to save it. Then I closed Visual Studio Code and opened it back up and it brought me right to where I left off. From here, I scrolled down to the Advanced Settings section. I changed the value from 3 to 5 in the probing points. You can leave it at 3 or make it more than 5, as long as it's odd numbers. This defines the amount of probing points for the leveling grid. So if I left it at 3, it would probe a 3x3 grid instead of a 5x5 grid like it does from factory. And you can see that Fast Probe is already defined, and if I had swapped the sensor for an Easy ABL sensor, it would be even faster. I'm going to show you a comparison in a bit of the factory speed versus the Fast Probe, just to show off the difference. And the last thing I'm going to change in here is to give my printer a custom name. To do that, I have to uncomment both of these lines and put the name I want where it says Change Me in quotation marks. So I'm just going to put Avels SV06, something simple. Okay, and after that, it's time to build the firmware. So I come down here to the bottom left side and click this little check mark to start building it. A panel will open up that shows the progress. After about 50 seconds, I got a message showing success in green, and that let me know it was finished and there were no errors. Now, I need to get the firmware to the SD card. So I came up here in the left panel again and clicked PIO to expand it. Then I clicked Build to expand that. Then I right clicked on this line and chose Reveal in Explorer, which opened the location of it in a new File Explorer window. Once that opened, I clicked on the main folder and found the .bin file. That's the new firmware that I need to put on the SD card. But first, I formatted the SD card by right-clicking on it and going to Format. I made sure that the file system is FAT32 and the allocation unit size is 4096. Then I clicked Start. Once that was done, I clicked OK. I renamed the bin file to Firmware 3 because part of the troubleshooting on this motherboard was to flash the firmware. I was told that every time you flash, you have to use a different name for the firmware. So I decided to go Firmware 1, Firmware 2, and so on. After renaming it, I removed the SD card and put it in the printer. 
Then I turned the printer on, and the screen went blue for about 15 to 20 seconds, and then the TH3D logo came up, which let me know that it had flashed successfully. After that, I reset the EEPROM as the instructions stated to do. Then I formatted the SD card again. Once that was done, I ran a PID tune, then leveled the bed again and reset my Z offset. And I was good to go. Now let's check out the difference in the amount of time that it takes to create a bed mesh between the stock firmware and the unified firmware. Alright, so as you saw, it was almost twice as fast as the stock firmware, going from 1 minute to 34 seconds. I'd say that's a pretty decent step up. Alright, and that concludes the firmware upgrade portion of this video. In the latter half, I'll be swapping out this motherboard and hopefully the USB will work on this one. Fingers crossed. Okay, so the first thing I did was take the clamshell off the back of the printer. Then I just removed the screw holding the clamshell closed. I also unplugged the cable running to the top of the hot end to make it easier to deal with. Then I took several pictures of the wires so I could make sure they were back in the same places on the new board. I started removing the plugs which was a bit of a pain with all the hot glue holding them down. But I eventually got them all and I was left with the four screws holding the board down. Comparing the new board to the old one, I don't see any difference. Other than more thermal paste under the heat sinks and this little plastic cover on part of this plug, I thought this was a jumper, but it's just a piece of plastic that doesn't do anything important as far as I can tell, other than block the plug. So I didn't bother moving it to the new board. I tried to do this without cutting any of the zip ties, but removing the one holding the cable chain going to the hot end made the swap a lot easier. So I had to replace that. And then I was able to route the wires out of the way of the clamshell so that I could close it up and screw it closed. After that, I put it back on the printer, plugged the hot end cable in, and turned the printer on. And it booted up just fine. Then I plugged it into the USB port to see if it was recognized by the computer. Success! Now that I can actually use the USB port on it, I can do something I've been waiting to try, which is visualize the bed mesh. I do that by running a G29 code in Pronterface, which tells the printer to run the bed level. Then I copy the results and come to this website. I click in this box and press Ctrl A to highlight everything, then paste it and click to visualize. And there's my bed mesh. Now I can see where I need adjustments, but that's for another video. I can also now print over USB directly from Pronterface or Cura. No more moving the SD card back and forth. 
All right, that's all I've got for you today. If you enjoyed the video, leave a thumbs up and consider subscribing if you're not already subscribed. I appreciate you tuning in. Catch you in the next one. And as always, have the best day ever.